So right in front of me, I have the brand new Zephyrus G16 and the Asus Zephyrus G14. And from a design standpoint, I think these things look absolutely awesome. Now they're not perfect. I think there are two things that a lot of people are not going to like, but from a design standpoint, looks way better than the previous model. Like these are just thinner, they're lighter. They got rid of the tacky anime matrix that you had on the G14 that would light up all over the back and it would end up looking like a tacky Vegas casino. But now instead you get this little slash across the top of the lid, which still has mini LED lights baked inside, but it just gives it its own identity without being tacky. To give you guys some reference, I have the previous G14 here. And when you put them side by side, like look how much thinner the newer version is. Like it's like almost half the thickness of the previous model. The same thing holds true for the G16. I don't have a G16 here, but this is the previous M16. And you can see the difference in terms of overall thickness, just a lot thinner this year. And that also translates to a lighter laptop. Like this G14 is 1.5 kilograms, so just over three pounds. Whereas this G16, depending if you get a 4080 or 4090, that can go up to like 1.95 kilograms. But if you get anything lower, like 4070 and below, that drops down to 1.85 kilograms. Overall, the feel of the laptop is also different. I found that the previous G14 and even M16, even though it was a metal chassis, would feel kind of plastic. It had this like, I don't know, hollow sound to it. Now there's a little bit of lid flex, but it's nothing to worry about, but it just feels much better when you're touching it. On top of all this, the port lineup is also very identical. So you're not gonna be losing any ports if you drop down to the G14. So the big difference is processors. If you buy a G16, it comes with an Intel processor all the way up to a Core Ultra 9. This one has a Core Ultra 7 right now. And if you buy a G14, they're sticking with AMD all the way up to a Ryzen 9 8945 HS CPU. So the G16 has a new proprietary power port, same as the G14. They both have an HDMI port. They both have a Type-C port. This one on the left-hand side is Thunderbolt 4 on the G16, whereas it's USB 4.0 on the G14. USB 3.2, combo audio jack, and then on the right-hand side, you have another Type-C port. This is not Thunderbolt. USB 3.2 and a full-size SD card slot. The only difference in ports besides it being AMD is that you don't get a full-size SD card slot on the G14. It just happens to be micro SD. Now, this new proprietary connector is going to be standard. So they're getting rid of the barrel connector. And I don't know if you guys can see this, but this little connector is what it looks like now. It really reminds me of like mini USB, but it's a lot easier to plug in. If you are buying the G16, it comes with a 200 watt or 240 watt power brick, again, depending if you get 4080 and above. And the G14 comes with a 180 watt power brick. Both of these laptops have rapid charge, so you can get like 30, 50% in just like 30 minutes. But obviously if you use a type C charger, hundred Watts, you can forget bringing the bigger charger and travel with something lighter. Now fingerprints are obviously going to show up more so on the G16. It's a black laptop, but the good news is you can get either or in whatever color you want. If you want the G14 in black, you have that option. You do get some fingerprints on this silver model, but it's not as noticeable as the black version. So if that's gonna bother you, then I'd probably stick with the silver one. Now, when you open them up, the displays go back pretty much to the identical range. And look, you know, there's a little bit of wobble, but it's not terrible. Like the hinge still feels pretty solid. Once I opened up this G14, the first thing that I thought about was the Mercury razor blade. Like that's what it kind of reminds me of. And look, it's a very nice keyboard. It's a little mushy, but there's still a nice tactile feel to it. Obviously you can get this with RGB on both of the models. Don't let the speaker grill on the G16 fool you. Both of these speakers or both of these laptops have six speakers. And I think that's one area they really improved on. The sound quality on these new laptops are so much better than the previous versions. Like I'm gonna do a little comparison compared to the older G14 and you guys let me know how it sounds.
The track pads on both of these guys are made out of glass. They're very, very big, so you have lots of space. Obviously bigger on the G16, just because it's a bigger laptop with more deck space. You have the separate keys at the top to control your volume, microphone, and get to the armory crate. The power button on the right-hand side no longer has a fingerprint embedded into it or fingerprint scanner. And instead you now have facial recognition. So you can use Windows Hello to scan your face to quickly log in. Also, one thing that I love about this newer G14 is that the keycaps are actually white. Like they're definitely a different tone compared to the deck of the keyboard, but they're not yellow. Like the previous G14 had this like yellow or green tinge to it as if you were like smoking near your laptop and it got discolored. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's just a little bit more yellow on the keycaps, whereas this new version completely solves that. But the stars of the show are the display. Like these are both OLED displays. They're absolutely gorgeous. And I love the direction that this is going in because if you buy the G14, you get this 2880 by 1800 OLED display. It's 120 Hertz, insane color gamut, really good color accuracy and very respectable screen brightness. Like I've been playing with it. It just looks so good when you're gaming. And even though it supports HDR, it gets around 500 nits peak brightness. So it's not like the best screen for HDR. It's still bright enough that content just looks really, really good. Now on the G16, the resolution is a little bit lower at 2560 by 1600, but you get a 240 Hertz display instead of 120. And they both have a 0.2 millisecond response time. The color accuracy is fairly identical, a little bit better on the G14, but really it's like splitting hairs here. But for gaming and content consumption, I absolutely love these displays. Now there are a couple of differences in terms of performance between these two laptops. The G14 is strictly using an AMD CPU and you can spec it all the way up to a Ryzen 9 8945HS CPU. The G16 is strictly using Intel, so up to a Core Ultra 9 CPU. The RAM differences are equal, so they both can be spec'd up to 32 gigabytes of RAM, and I think that's the first thing you're not gonna like. It's soldered onto the motherboard, so no more upgradable RAM at all. The other thing is the GPU options. If you want a 4080 or 4090, it's no longer being offered in the G14. Quite frankly, I think that's a good thing, cramming a 4080 and a 4090 in a chassis this thin, and then dropping the, the TGP to support it just doesn't make sense. Like you're just not getting the proper performance. So you can only buy the G14 up to an RTX 4070. If you want the 4080 or 4090, you gotta go to the G16. So the wattages are a little bit different. The G14 tops out at 90 watts. That seems very low, but an RTX 4070, regardless of whether it runs at 90 watts or 130 watts, the performance is identical. Whereas on the G16, it goes up to 115 watts if you buy the 4080 or 4090, but if you buy the 4070 or below, that gets dropped down to 105 watts. Now, I obviously can't show you benchmarks because this is a prototype unit, but this model does have the Ryzen 9 8945 HS CPU inside of here. It performs very, very well. This is the Core Ultra 7. It's kind of like not pushing as fast as it should just because this is a prototype unit, but it's very similar to what you've seen so far. I'm expecting a nice performance uplift with the Core Ultra 9. Now I did game on both of these laptops. Again, I'm not allowed to show the FPS on them, but they feel really good. Like to me, the 4080 and 4090 is obviously not gonna be as fast as a 175 watt TGP thicker boy, but it feels really good. And I, I feel like for most people, if you're looking at the G16, you probably wanna stick with a 4070 as well. I ran all the games I usually play. I've been playing a lot of the finals lately, not a very demanding game, but it looks so good on this laptop. And because they both support G-Sync, the response time of these displays feel amazing. Now you can play all AAA titles on both of these laptops. If you get the 4070, you might have to fine tune some of those settings a little bit, but these are both beautiful displays to play on. Now, again, I can't benchmark fan or heat, but none of these really overheated. The heat management on this G14 is way better than the previous version, so that's a good thing. Fan noise overall is a lot lower, like a lot lower. I'm gonna wait for a full retail model to come in, but these prototype units are displaying much better fan noise than previous versions. These new Meteor Lake processors are just so much better in terms of efficiency and the fan noise 
that comes out of it obviously reflects that. Now the internals are going to look a bit different. If you buy the 4080 or 4090 model of the G16, it's going to have a vapor chamber cooler. You also get two slots for drive. So one of them is already populated, which does get good read and write speeds. Plus you have a second slot over here if you wanna add additional storage. This under here is just access to your swappable Wi-Fi 6 e-card. On the G14, there is no vapor chamber cooling option. It doesn't need it, it's a 4070, but they have included a third fan. Now I thought this third fan was cooling something underneath it, let's say like the RAM, but what it's actually doing is bringing air from the bottom and blowing it towards the CPU and the GPU. So you can see at the top here, the fan is kind of reversed. So it's taking the air from the bottom of the lid and pushing it towards the CPU and the GPU. You only get one slot for storage. And just like the G16 RAM is soldered on, swappable Wi-Fi 6 e-card, but there's definitely a lot of copper going across the middle. You have a 73 watt hour battery on the G14 and a bigger 90 watt hour battery on the G16. Now again, these are prototype units, but I still got good battery life. And I feel like this will be a lot more once the retail models come out, but it was around eight hours of use before needing to charge. So here's the thing. I really love the design of the G16 and G14. I think it looks way better than the previous model. And I know some of you are not going to like the soldered RAM. I don't like it either. Like most people buy gaming laptops because they can upgrade components like the drive and the RAM. And that's one of the areas they kind of took away. But from a design standpoint, the OLED display, the way it sounds when you're gaming, the better battery life, the, the keyboard experience, the better speakers, all that has been upgraded. So if soldered on RAM doesn't bother you, then you probably will like these models better. But if you're hanging on to a 2023 or even 2022 G14, it's probably not a big upgrade for you just because they really haven't changed the GPUs this year. Either way, I will be reviewing these properly once I get retail units into the studio. So make sure to drop your questions below and I'll try to answer as many of them in that video. So subscribe to the channel for that. Like the video if you liked it and I'll see you guys in the next one.